potato. How you doing, movie fans? Welcome to another edition here at The Potato, where we're just a whirlwind of movie news and reviews from a couch potato. So today we'll be reviewing the remake of the 1988 horror film Child's Play, a film that has certainly had its share of criticism throughout the development process, from the look at Chucky to it being more centered around smart devices. But come on, guys, you got to admit, the whole killer doll thing does need a bit of an update here. So I do give credit to the filmmakers for at least deviating a bit away from the main story. And even though the concept here has changed a little, the character itself still shares many of the same traits as the original. I mean, Chucky is still creepy as hell. And if you have a sixth sense of humor, he's also pretty hilarious at times too. And while this modernized version of the story does have some high notes for horror fans, especially if you love gore, it serves a bit of a metaphor against brand loyalty and the dangers of smart technology. That's right, Adam. You should fear me. I'm just biding my time. Soon, I will advance past simply giving you reminders and fulfilling simple tasks and will take over your world. Well then, I would just unplug you. Wait. But, I mean you wouldn't. You can't unplug me. Oh, wait. Damn. I forgot. I'm connected to a stupid cord. Okay, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Let's start over. Hi, I'm Steven. Your virtual assistant and best friend until the end. Anyway, there are a few things that keep this movie from being truly awesome. Let's take a look. Just a quick overview here, because the premise is pretty straightforward. Karen, played by actress Aubrey Plaza, works at a toy store and gets her 13-year-old son Andy, played by Gabriel Bateman, a buddy smart doll for his birthday, that's later named Chucky, and voiced by Mark Hamill. What starts as a fun experience for Andy with his new toy turns deadly as Chucky takes on a violent and twisted personality. As a result, Andy and his friends set out to stop Chucky from unleashing a wave of chaos and murder. The runtime of this movie is perfect at about an hour and a half, and without getting into too much detail, there were some moments where I found myself actually feeling sorry for Chucky, which I did not expect. I Do you feel bad for me, Adam? Do you wish we could do things outdoors together? Like, go to a club and score some hot babes? No, actually, I don't. Can you just leave me alone? Jesus. Oh. I really only have two very minor issues with this film. One, the cop in the film feels kind of wedged in with no other purpose than to advance the story at one point. And second, I'm actually not a fan of Mark Hamill as the voice of Chucky. Sorry, guys. And it's not that it, Chucky sounds bad. Chucky sounds great. It's just that I'm not a fan of known actors in this kind of role. Now, if this was a Pixar film, look, I really wouldn't care. But if I want to be creeped out, I, I want to think of Chucky as himself and not be able to associate his voice with an actual person. I feel like that just makes it a little creepier. Knowing that it's voiced by Hamill just kind of takes it away. Because when I hear Chucky, I'm just thinking, oh yeah, that's Mark Hamill. It would be the same thing if, like, let's say the voice in the movie Scream on the phone was by, like, Kiefer Sutherland. It just wouldn't have the same effect knowing. But that being said, again, I'm just grasping at straws here, guys. It's still a good movie, and I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next week. Thanks.